Hey, so we are ready to talk about book number four in our summer young adult book series. And the book is called Counting by Sevens by Holly Goldberg Sloan. I just finished it a few minutes ago, <laughs> right on time. And I just, out of the five books we chose, this was the one that felt like the most sort of satisfying novelish type of read. I just it was just a good read. I was trying to explain it to my daughter a few minutes ago uh, cuz she said she got this book. I brought when I brought it home, she said, "Yeah, you got me that like 2 years ago and I never read it." Um, she's almost 13. She said it was too boring. She never got into it. So, um I'm sure she may have just given it a few pages to try and I sort of remember the first couple of pages for me too. I was sort of the way that Willow talked at first was it was hard to connect with her because she sounded a little bit, um, she was talking so much early on about sort of all of the, the whole device of counting by sevens was much more used at the beginning than it was near the end. And she seemed uh, just harder to connect with at first. So I'm thinking that might've been the reason that she had trouble getting into it. But I, I was, the reviews of this were so overwhelmingly positive that I just took a chance. Even though when I read the first couple of pages, I wasn't that into it myself. But I'm so glad I read it. I thought this was just a, just a wonderful, wonderful book. These characters are going to stay with me for a long, long time. I thought the story was really unique and um, never, I can't think of the word, schmaltzy or like overly, I can't think of what the word is, but just, you know, where you, they play on your emotions in a sort of a cheap way. It's just very real connections made between the people in this book. So I just took a couple of notes about the points that I want to make, but... Overall, I feel like the the main value in a book like this, I think, I don't know that I would ever do this as like a whole class novel or anything like this because I feel like this is one of those books that you just pass around because it's just a good read. I think you probably could study it for, you know, literary merits. I feel like the writing in it is really good because it's... Um, she's got a light touch. She doesn't overdo any of the emotions and I'm sure that I could... Uh, I'd like to study this with students as writers. I'd love to pull passages out to show them how you actually sort of end a scene without overdoing or overtelling the emotions and just showing them symbolically. I think she does a really nice job with that. But overall, I just couldn't wait to get in bed at night and read it because I just wanted to see what was going to happen next, which is just a great story. It was super character driven. And it was just one of those things where, you know, in a good story, you should get to know the characters really well and the major characters should change by the end. And this is sort of the definition of a good story, and they definitely uh, do. A lot of things about you know the characters in this book sort of change over time. Um, I wanted to make sure that I just talk a little bit about how much I love Willow's character. Pretty much within the first fourth of the book, I was just madly in love with her as a character, and I have this picture behind me, two pictures I pulled up because of who she reminded me of so much. Um, I'm not sure if you watch Silicon Valley, the TV show on HBO, but this, her name is Lori. <laughs> um, Willow reminded me a little bit of her, and also, where's my mouse? She also reminded me of Data uh, on Star Trek, the next generation. She reminded me so much of both of these people in the way that she processes sort of human interactions and processes them in a very like um, analytic kind of detached way. And that was something I found so endearing about her because I felt like it was part of her nature, part of her genius, but also uh, kind of a, a survival tactic that, you know, when things started to get complicated emotionally, she could just step back and uh, analyze things and, and process even just basic, you know, emotional things that were happening. Even within herself, she was sort of able to pull out as an observer and say, oh, that was an interesting emotional reaction I just had. And I just found it funny how consistent she could be with that. And I think, I think this book is going to appeal to a lot of different kids who may either cope with things in that way themselves or might just see it as just such an interesting way of dealing with things that it might, it, it almost reminds me of uh, Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth, which I know I'm getting a little bit far off, but you know, one of the things he says in that book in terms of just being able to sort of, I guess, be happy or healthy or something is the ability to not 
be tied too much to your own ego and not be too attached to it to be able to sort of see yourself as a separate thing and sort of observe yourself from a slight distance that 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 can sort of help um, process the struggles of life or the you know the suffering and and I felt like Willow sort of did that too intuitively so I just feel like her character was just really um, just such a such a unique and interesting character for a young adult book. Um, one thing that I was curious about in the book, and uh, I guess maybe a little disappointed, and just wondering uh, why the author, why Holly Goldberg Sloan decided to do so little with Willow's parents. Uh, they they sort of get one or two scenes in the book. You know, we get sort of just almost like. I'm sure you're wondering about who Willow's parents were. Here, here's a little bit about them, and then here's how they died. And now, okay, now we're going to move on. And and the thing is, in some ways, it makes sense because the book really isn't about Willow's relationship to her parents. It's about this growing relationship with uh, the family and with Dell and um, crap. I forgot the taxi driver's name. With all of these new people who sort of become her new family. But Willow is such an interesting character, and she has this whole history with this other family who was an adoptive family also. And because she's so smart, I find it almost impossible that she wouldn't be processing things about them um, at some point in the book. I mean, nobody really even brings them up to her. There's no point where any of the characters ever say, you know, do you want to talk about your family at all? And... I just, I found that to be a little bit unrealistic. It didn't really take away from the book. I still felt like the book was fantastic, but it just made me wonder why that why that decision was made. And I just looked at the interview with the author at the end and that, that didn't get brought up either. And I just, I thought it was, um, I don't know, I just thought it was an interesting choice. It makes me wonder if she's gonna write another book someday where she goes back into, you know, Willow's childhood prior to her parents' death. Because as much as I really love these characters, for Willow to be such an interesting person, I'm thinking her parents must have been pretty interesting too. And we barely even get to see them. So I, I'm curious about that. Um, just in general, I think the book is a great, uh, you know, jumping off point for, for questions of family and, and talking about the family that, you know, you are given and the family that you choose and families that we grow, even if we haven't lost our birth family or our family that we are, grow up with, how do we continue to grow and build family? And there's this question at the end of sort of the seven people in your life who are the most important to you at any given time and how that can change over time. And that's just, I think that would make a great question to ask students. And, you know, I would also give my students the opportunity to say, maybe it's not seven for you. Maybe it's nine, maybe it's 12, maybe it's four. Uh, but just for them to really consider who would they put on that list you know, um, are there any surprises? Are there any people who might officially belong on that list? But for them, they just really are are not as significant as maybe they could be. Just lots of interesting questions about family. Um, and I also liked all the, well, maybe not all, yeah, no, all the, the strong female characters. I loved, um, gosh, just the whole family. Um, Patty. Her daughter, May, I've been saying May in my head, although I don't know if it's my, maybe, and um, and Willow, and, and all of the sort of decisive actions that they take throughout the book. Uh, they have a real leadership role in this book, and so it's just another one with really good, strong female characters without hitting you over the head about it. So I'm going to stop for now, stop talking about it for now, because I would love to hear what other people think. The book, again, is Counting by Sevens. It is Holly Goldberg Sloan, and it is just as wonderful as people say it is. So let's hear some of your thoughts about this too.